welcome everybody to the final episode of Tokyo Stories. The 32nd Olympiad in Tokyo has produced some highs and lows of the sport and in this episode we're going to have a wrap-up of all three disciplines joined by fellow commentator, broadcaster, TV presenter. It is Phil Gazala, familiar voice, voice of show jumping and a man that was in Tokyo for those games representing India. He is a double silver medalist from the Asian Games back in 2018 and his very first in individual Olympics. It is the wonder that is Fouad Mazza. Fouad, welcome. Phil, welcome. Thank you very Hi, much. Hi, Spencer. Fouad, nice to see you. And first of all, may I just say, Fouad, many congratulations. Thank you very much. Problem. Thank you very, Absolutely very much. Superb. Thank you. Echoed, echoed here as well. Well, let's get going because it's a very short program, as we know. Let's start with the dress size. Well, that was the first discipline of these games a couple of weeks ago. I mean, Phil, it's two weeks ago, the dress size. I mean, can you believe that the games are already over? No, uh, and, uh, but, but hasn't there been some across all disciplines, some absolutely top class sport? It, it's, it's been gripping from the, very, from the very word go. When we first had no idea who was going to come out of that arena with a with the gold medals from the dressage? We thought it would probably be Germany, but it didn't perhaps work out with the with the people we thought it might in, in terms of the individual medals. No, absolutely. Now, Fred, you had a, a chance to watch the dressage as well, just because it was just before the eventing started. But some rising stars in the dressage. Firstly, what were the, what were your moments of the dressage? In, in this games? I must say it was very interesting to watch. Um, I think it was uh, probably the first time I've seen such high level dressage in the flesh. Um, and the horses were, were very nice. There was some very good tests and very good riding. And um, I think uh, the new format with the music, um, it made it a bit more interesting to watch and um, a bit more fun, let's say. I agree there. Phil, we watched the dressage. The team competition was, was uh, amazing. The individuals were incredible. But let's go back to that format just, uh, just briefly. It, I think it worked better, better as well. We, we spoke to a number of riders and a number of team members. It was better viewing. Yes, I agree. I agree. And it made it more, um, you know, they, they did get to choose their music as well. So it was not just randomly um, chosen or, or um, so on. But uh, yeah, um, it made it very much more interesting to watch. And um, they almost, I suppose they would have trained to it as well, uh, I'm guessing, because it was, um, you know, it was catered to the horse's uh, movements and the way they moved and so on. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Phil, you, you again, I mean, what did you think? Um, like Fouad said, you know, but I want to just include the other two disciplines. The the standard was was absolutely incredible. Um, I think that the horses were amazing because, you know, they didn't have the benefit of 20, 30, 40,000 people mm -hmm. actually generating an atmosphere. And I'd be interested to know from Forehead's point of view, from you know, from the jumping and the dressage that you did, did that uh, did that affect you, you know, not having that buzz and and sort of close atmosphere of of spectators in the arena? Did that affect you at all? I suppose it depends. Um, it depends really on the horse. Um, you know, some horses can uh, shy away from that sort of atmosphere, and some horses actually like the presence of a large audience and 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 uh, so on and I, I suppose with the riders too you know some can crumble under the pressure um, and some can can thrive under it uh, for me personally um, I always feel uh, Mickey's a horse who likes to to perform uh, for an audience um, so it was um, he almost um, let's say got a little bit more shy or a little bit more tense going into an empty stadium because um, there was something quite, um, let's say, eerie about it. Um, you know, you could, exactly. um, you could, you could, um, you they could sort of pay attention to the movements of the camera, or um, you know, things blowing, or um, you know, um, whereas I suppose with the audience that would all sort of get um, uh, overshadowed slightly, let's say, um, and with the jumping. 
Yeah, uh, when you had a fall down, you definitely heard it. <laughs> <laughs> so there was no need to look back. <laughs> but um, yeah, look, I think um, it was amazing the fact that they were able to run it. And, you know, it was sad that uh, the stands were empty, but um, the organizers did an amazing job. And I must say the volunteers and, and everyone involved with the games were, were very, very helpful. And it was just, um, you know, although it wasn't um, the games we hoped with uh, spectators and so on, it was, you definitely did feel like you were at a high end top level event. Um, so hats off to the organizers and the FEI for um, doing such a good job. Yeah, totally. Well, let's just start with the dressage because we will come back to the eventing and exactly the atmosphere in, in that arena because it's a fascinating one as, as you said, Phil, with no spectators, and we talked to Lyndall Oatley about the atmosphere and, and everything for those horses, Patrick Kittle, her husband, out there, and basically saying that if you dropped a, a piece of paper, it was like dropping a brick and it just echoed around the arena. It was, it was really interesting. Well, the team medals, Germany, were very strong contenders coming into these games with the world number one, two and three in the team. But the individuals, now we didn't quite know where the medals were going to go. Isabel Vert won her last individual medal back in Atlanta at 96. And it was a battle. Two best friends in Isabel Vert and Jessica von Brieder Vandal going into the individual. It was up for grabs, Phil. It, it definitely was up for grabs. And, you know, I think there's globally to just watch Isabel Worth come in and, and continue to perform the way she does um, after all the medals that she's won and the way she manages. You, you referenced there that um, Isabel had a choice of two or three horses to ride, which is absolutely phenomenal um, for any, any rider at that level in any discipline to be able to have you know, a garage full of Ferraris is, is <laughs> a very, very nice thing to, to be able to achieve. Um, but hasn't she achieved so much? But there's one thing I feel absolutely certain about, about the wonderful Isabel Worth, is that she would never have, have begrudged her great mate Jessica that gold medal. And in fairness, you know, if I'm not mistaken, she, um, Jessica won by nearly two points, I think, mm. in the end. It was quite a clear margin. Yeah. It was very, it was very clear. It was convincing. And, and if you're going to do it, do it in style. And I think it was thoroughly deserved from, from the very first time down the centre line. Jessica and um, Delera, they just looked brilliant. They did. And, and, I, and I think, as you've quite rightly said, uh, Spencer, you know, Germany came there, dominated, it was dominating the sport. Um, and I, and I, if you don't mind, I'd like to just have a, a quick chat about the Great Britain being third in that individual because, mm. um, you know, multi medal Charlotte Dujardin for Great Britain, who's, you know, no longer got a great Vallegro, came there with a, a much younger horse in Geo. I mean, Fouad, what did you think about that performance? That was a very smart performance, I must say. And it's, it's very nice to see how uh, the, the top riders, you know, bring their younger horses up to these levels. And, um, uh, it's uh, you know for a young horse it was a lot to take in it's a lot of lot to see um, especially you know traveling to a new country with the different um, climate and so on um, no uh, it was amazing just to watch I must say um, I wasn't a huge fan of watching dressage I was a huge fan of riding dressage uh, but I think after these games it's changed it because it was the first time like I said before that I got to see such high level competition in person um, and it's amazing what these horses can do and how well tuned they are. Absolutely. Well, Team Gold went to Germany, as expected, in the silver medal team position was the United States of America. They have been knocking at the door. And one of those who was in the team that was also riding was the wonderful Sabine Shoot Kerry. Now, incredible in the dressage. She finished uh, individually just outside the medals in uh, fifth, sixth place. But she was she was a real rising star of the games, Phil. Yes, and I think I, one thing is that I find fascinating about Sabine. I love her background. I don't know if anybody realizes that that you know she was born in Germany. She was an exhibition rider um, at, at events, and then went to America um, and became an American citizen. And, and and Sancho, the horse that she rode, she's actually had since she was three years old and mm. now fifteen. 
So I think the story is is absolutely superb. Because let's face it, you know, when you compare Sabine's name to the likes of Stefan Peters, comparatively unknown, and mm. probably one of the big surprises of, of the dressage games. Yeah, she totally was. But it's, I think this is what it, what the games are all about. You have those wonderful stories of com that have been together since very early days and then appearing on, on the world stage at the Olympic Games. It's what dreams are made of, and that's what we love to see. Absolutely. Um, Fred, you got to watch the dressage. Did you get much time to go and stand and watch the finals? No, I must say um, not. I didn't watch all of it. I tried to watch the, the last three riders, which was um, um, Isabel and... Uh, uh, and 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 uh, Jessica. Jessica. Yeah. And, um, yeah. It was amazing. I mean, um, you know, the the how uh, towards the end, some horses looked like they were getting tired. I probably think that's what happened to Isabel's horse. But like you know, like Phil said, Jessica's horse just had that extra bit of gas left in the tank, um, and she pulled out all the stops, and uh, it was a beautiful test. I think she deserved. She definitely deserved the gold, um, uh, and she was, you know, she 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 was very consistent the whole the whole week. Yeah. Well, talking of golds, we move on to eventing. Years it has taken for the British team to win another gold medal as a team, but this was your sport, where the weather conditions. Now, let's just talk quickly about the weather because it was it was amazingly hot. It was incredibly humid. How was it for you? Yeah, I must say, you know, as um, for for us, when you when we arrived in Tokyo, one thought, this is not too bad, or you know, we can cope with this. But it was a different story, I must say, for the horses. Um, it was, you know, very very different to them. They would have probably never been in in uh, in climatic conditions such as this. So it was very influential, or. Um, on, on you know on the performance of the horses but um, you know I, kn I know a lot of the riders um, you know did various things to acclimatize their horses uh, to this uh, to the weather conditions there by training with um, you know sweat rugs or, or rain sheets in the in the, during the summer to get the horses used to performing under the, the heat um, and you know, I think the organizers did a good job by trying to run the competitions, you know, very early in the morning or during the latter latter part of the evening or the afternoon, yeah. um, which which helped us a lot. You've been improving. I've kept an eye on you on the international circuit for a number of years now. But the dressage was a big ask for a lot of horses, as you mentioned. Horses sometimes rise to the occasion when there are no crowds, and when we've been bringing the horses back in is with no crowds or few crowds. So the horses aren't shocked completely by the fact that they were going into an arena, but with the enormity, the vast capaciousness of that arena really show itself because it was so empty, and it was one of those that either suited or it really didn't suit your horses but as a rider you go and then get on with the job you were inside the top 10 after dressage yes um you know i thought we did quite a good test i was very pleased with uh, senior's test i mean uh, he's beautifully trained by bettina um and uh, you know we can almost uh, I, w I came out of the test or when I was training for it anyway, I, I always thought you we could go a couple of notches more difficult <laughs> because he's very, very capable of doing a very high level test. And, uh, you know, he knows all the movements so well and um, he's just he's just a delight to ride on the flat. Um, yeah, I think with with the lack of, uh, you know, uh, senior, he likes he likes atmosphere. I think he's. I, he's almost more comfortable when there are more people watching in a, in a funny way. Um, and the fact that, um, you know, there was, there was no audience was, um, yeah, it was a bit of a shame, but on the other side, um, you know, he still did a good test in there and, um, you know, he was very relaxed and so was yeah. I. It was, it was a pleasure to watch. And we, we know we've seen um, Senior Medical over the years with Bettina and he is a great horse for you to ride. Cross Country Day, a brilliant uh, 
day of action for us watching, because of course a lot of people not there. Um, the Sea Forest cross country course, it was always going to be a big test. We didn't really know what to expect, but Derek de Grazia, the course designer, he produced a wonderful, uh, but the, it came up on the telly very, very thick and fast. It looked like you were literally jumping and turning all of the time. It's been 12 months in, in the waiting. The ground conditions looked... Um, tell us what that was like out there. Firstly, I must say the course was beautifully built um, and where it was located was just amazing. Um, you know, the view around the cross country course was simply amazing. You know, now that I've come back and watched it on the telly a few times, um, it's just something amazing. I must say hats off to them. They've done a super job. Um, you know, the course was definitely championship level, according to me, it was full up to height. Um, I think, um, you know, seeing where it was being built, uh, I suppose we all kind of expected that it would be twisty. Um, and Derek used the, the undulations of the ground in a, in a very good way. And, you know, he it was very fair what he was asking the horses to do, but he made it quite difficult to, to get the time. I think we had just seven or, or eight inside the time, if I'm not wrong, or perhaps even nine, I'm not nine, sure. Nine, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, but it, it, when we first walked the course, you, um, you know, you, because the lack of galloping and the lack of space, you, you didn't really feel that you could get a good flow or it would be quite difficult to get into a good rhythm. As you said, you know, from the start, it was jumping and turning. So, uh, but it was very different to ride. Um, you know, yeah. when you did ride it, um, obviously you had to take various uh, lines through the course to, to keep your flow. But um, it was much better to ride than it was to walk, let's say. It usually is though, is it, the cross country? Yeah. <laughs> um, it, we, there was some controversy on the course, of course. I mean, of course, of course. But the one thing, the one problematic fence out there, amongst a few others was the corner now the corner yeah. on the mim clip and it was it was on the yellow mim, mim clip this time which is a yes. slightly uh it's, it's a device that is designed to break under less pressure than the red clip um but it it caused a lot of problems it was at, at a fence that was coming downhill yes big oxer and it caused it caused enough of, of an issue Yes, um, you know, unfortunately for Mickey Young, he, um, yeah, he came to grief there. Um, but look, um, you know, I, I'm not too sure about, you know, how we go forward from this rule. Um, but it's, you know, I'm sure they'll look at the tape. Can we, and, can we just say he didn't come to grief there, but he hit the yes, frangible yes, pin. Yes, yes, yes. Well, he lost, he lost his gold medal there. He did, say. yes. <laughs> so I think he'll be quite upset about that. He will, he will. Um, um, Phil talked about the show jumping. It's a very short program, as we know. Phil talked about the show jumping. You talked about the show jumping as well earlier. Two rounds, one for the team, one for the individuals very quickly after the team jumping and you said having a pull down it echoed around the arena now you again you went in the atmosphere can completely different does that in the show jumping because we all know going into the show jumping as a competitor there's enough pressure on you but when there's no crowds you said about that you used the word earlier eerie does that yes. put even more pressure on you well, I suppose um, it depends on on each individual, you know that. But uh, for me, um, yeah, I think because in a weird way, um, there are a few people watching, and you know, the few people that were watching were watching you very closely. Yeah. <laughs> so you had that sort of feeling when you went in because everybody who was there, you know, was really intensely watching you around. So of course, every mistake you made um, would be spoken about or blown up into out of proportion perhaps let's say um but yeah you know it, even to jump under the lights um it's it's quite different for the horses um you know some horses were very spooky i remember i think laura's horse was very spooky mm. in the first round jumping under the lights which was a shame actually because um you know they both are good uh, she's a good show jumper and he is a good jumper as well so um yeah it's 
it it was a it was a very different experience um unlike any other championship to have no audience there but you know i suppose um it had to be so yeah um again it caused enough enough problems and we saw poles falling left right center horses spooking and reacting differently under the lights and and one of those you mentioned laura collett at that Liverpool at that water tray and, and unfortunately she had that down I think on both occasions in in her jumping team yeah. and the team gold goes to Great Britain after 49 years part of that gold medal winning team was Laura Collett back in 2013 Phil we know from being based in the UK she had a horrific fall at Tweezledown down in Hampshire resulting in herself being in a coma for six days and the road was enormous but from from there to gold, I mean, just one heck of a story. I, absolutely an incredible story and a wonderful comeback for Laura and everyone will be delighted to see her, you know, with a medal after what she's been through. But, but Spencer, I also think what's so wonderful about the, the major championships and perhaps particularly the Olympic Games is you, you tend to get somehow these incredible stories that come out. And I was looking mm. at the eventing thinking to myself, well, just in eventing itself, you've got the gold medal going to a nation who hasn't won one for 49 years. You've got a member of that team who a few years ago was in a coma for six days. And then you get a lady taking the individual gold for the first one in history. You know, oh, amazing. You know, just in that one sport out of all the Olympic sports that mm. take part, mm. there's there's, you know, there's movies to be made. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's just quite incredible how the games bring out these incredible um, situations and stories. But a, a, a great performance by Great Britain. They'll be delighted to have the gold back. They, you know, I'm sure would have felt amongst them over the last few decades that they would have, should have had it in the past. But it's there now. It's the um, modern day international velvet. <laughs> yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, well, the individual. Uh, the, Gold went to Great Britain and it was incredible. Australia, silver and in bronze, it went to France. Of course, the defending champions wasn't this time. Individual medals, well, they were taken. You've, you've just mentioned it was the individual medal going to Yula Kajewski. It was brilliant. It was the first lady in the history. When, it, when women are so good at this sport that they had not won individual gold. Yes, um, look, um it's it's an, it, i found that quite hard to believe and i think julia herself didn't believe that she was mm. she was the first one to to break yeah. that trend but um but what an amazing feat and to do it on a mare as well and uh you know she must be very very happy um, absolutely uh, very absolutely happy as well <laughs> a mare and a lady gold yeah. medal tom McEwen, great britain a brilliant result with Toledo yeah. de Casa. And then the bronze medal going to Andrew Hoy in his eighth Olympics. He's, I'm not going to mention just how old, but he's just over 60, yeah. uh, winning individual bronze. I mean, that again is a Yes, I must say, Tom has is, is been riding so, so well. I mean, he's someone I, I really uh, um, love to watch, you know, the way he rides cross country. He rides every phase um, in, in, in such a good way. And, um, and, and the horse as well is just super to watch Toledo um, and Andrew I, I must say I've looked 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 up to Andrew for a long time and to see him back uh, in, 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 in such a big way is just amazing I remember watching him uh, on, on old videotapes around Burley on a horse called Moonfleet um, a big thoroughbred dark bay horse it was just a, and and you know he's been He's been at the top for so long and to see him back up there is just something amazing. And one thing I must say, all three horses that were in the in the top three positions were all French. So French breeding yeah. is um is they were. Very it, well. it, it is amazing. Yeah. And we we can we can talk for hours every sport, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. One man I want to quickly give a massive pat on the back to because he's not been riding that long. He finished fourth, was Kazuma Tomoto, and yeah. you know being there the chinese had a first team in history uh, kazuma riding there under immense pressure from the home crowd finishing just outside the top medals but it, you wouldn't want to take andrew hoy off 
the podium. You know, yeah. he, he just uh-huh. thoroughly deserved to be there. Let's move on to the show jumping because that is the final uh, question discipline of the Olympic Games. A lot of interest, of course, going into these Olympics. Individual title was won by Nick Skelton uh, in Rio. Going into these games, we had a very um, different team, Phil, for Great Britain as well. Yes, I think the first thing I'd like to say about the jumping is that, you know, on day one, we had 73 competitors from representing 35 nations. And whilst the, there are bound to be favourites, going into this jumping competition, there could have been so many winners of these medals, both in team and in, in, as individuals. And it, it, it was probably never seen before such an open competition, not open because the class wasn't high, open mm. because there are so many high class riders from around the world represented by all these mm. nations. It, the, the, one of the most phenomenal entry lists of a competition. And honestly, over the four days of jumping, that's what it panned out to be. It was absolutely uh, electric. Um, Great Britain, as you say, defending that individual medal from London with Nick Skelton. Well, you know, we all know what happened and uh, what, what style and what class with Ben Mayer, you know, with a horse that everybody would like to have looking over their stable door with Explosion W. Mm. Um, a, a truly tremendous performance. I've got nothing more to say than that. I saw him at the Europeans three years ago a couple of years ago and um you know when he had a fence down he, he was a well well deserved gold medal and you know that is almost uh, not even not even arguably the best horse in the world at the moment absolutely and and watching him compete that horse he he just looks so cool under under pressure of course jumping in as an as you is different than as you're jumping part of the team and having that team pressure on you. But it just looked totally effortless, totally mm. deserved. And the gold correctly went to the best horse on the day. Yes, I must say when, when Ben, uh, I, I, had the op- I was lucky enough to watch, uh, watch that round. He, he, he came in and you already knew that he'd yeah. won the medal. Um, I, I agree. Say, he, he, <laughs> He took a stride out everywhere. He was brave. Um, you know, we were, we were, I was watching with a few eventers and we were thinking, gosh, we would never go to fences that fast. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I think well, well deserved. And, and I think the horse as well. Um, he's just been an amazing horse for Ben as well. And he really uh, rose to the occasion. But there was a lot of talk about the new format and a lot of talk about how this team competition was going to unfold. Well, there is no question how it unfolded. The medals went to the right teams. That, that's without a doubt. And, um, you know, I think the, the new format will always have lots of discussion with people over coffees and beers. Uh, the, at the end of the day, if the new format didn't work out for you, it was probably going to be a bad bad format if it worked out for you it's probably fine <laughs> that's um, always the way <laughs> so it's it, it that's very good but i think you know we, one has to you know we talked about explosion w let's just talk about sweden for a minute they took team gold but i want to just particularly talk about peter fredrickson's 15 year old all in this is truly truly a superstar and, it, and if we could be talking in terms of like all in as we are in, in a few years time about explosion w ben mayer would be very very happy all in i thought needs recognition for just the most incredible another winning medal performance and pedder three olympic silver medals he's mm. had mm. um i honestly to see pedder fredrickson go out with a gold on one of the greatest partnerships of this century so far I think was so well deserved and so pleasing. I've even got goosebumps even just talking about it because it was something truly, truly magical. Regards to Sweden as a team, whew, 73 in the first round went down to 30 and then six in the jump off. In that jump off, all three members of the Swedish team, you know, and so they obviously went into the final day as favourites, but it wasn't that simple because the United States pulled their socks up from having a few fences down in the qualifying round, ended up going to a jump off, which was ironically 
a similar jump off that we saw at see, the World Equestrian Games in Tryon. And, and this time it, it went Sweden, Sweden's way and no one's going to begrudge him on that. 1.3 seconds split the first two teams. It, it just a, a magical, magical time for Sweden. You know, Marlin Barrier Jonsson with Indiana, she was at the World Equestrian Games, that partnership. Onit von Eckerman with King Edward. Well, we're now talking about an 11 year old who did not knock a fence the entire Olympic Games. I ought to just refer back to All In on that. All In for Peter Fredrickson has only knocked one fence down in two Olympic Games. Wow. I mean, we are, you know, King Edward jumped 60 fences over the five days here and didn't knock a fence. These are incredible athletes that we can only, you know, as being part of this sport, be so proud of and be so, you know, I love the fact that Forward has twice said that you watch the pure dressage and then you watch the show jumping. And I can just tell by the way you're saying it, Forward, it meant a lot to you to be able to see those disciplines at that level. Yes, definitely. It was it was amazing just to watch. There's lots to learn from these top riders, and um, what yeah, what an opportunity! What an opportunity. I, I love the fact, Fred, that you said you would, uh, and I've I've commentated and watched a lot of top class show jumping over the times and evented. But I love the fact that you said I would never. We would never gallop down to a fence that big that fast. These fences come down so easily. It's just truly underestimated how easily those poles fall they very very easy and, and i think that's as you mentioned the course there i think i we must say many congratulations to santiago varela the course designer because he you know coming into these championships and he is one of the most experienced course designers in the world but coming into a championship like this you know, with all these different nations taking part, it's very, very difficult to design these courses, whether it be cross country or in the jumping elements. And it, just a staggering result. He also had the, you know, the new format to think about mm -hmm. Santiago. You know, he knew that these teams were coming without a drop score. Did that put more pressure on Santiago? I don't know. I look forward to speaking to him when he gets back. But what a what a way for that whole week of sport in terms of all the jumping to pan out i think both course designers have done both cross country and jumping have, have just done a miraculous job a truly professional top class absolutely brilliant and often they don't get mentioned you know foad can't compete without a course designer and nor can <laughs> ben mayer and, and all those other people <laughs> and uh, you, you you we all need them and, and i think they deserve a, a real accolade Yes. A medal yes. themselves. I agree. It's not just a fence with a couple of poles on. There's a lot of history in those fences as well. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. It really is. Mm. Um, Daisuke Fukushima, he uh, was, a, was incredible as well. We have to talk about him quickly um, because the Japanese rider, he finished sick beating some amazing riders. And that is, again, the lovely story about the Olympic Games is that we can see some not just rising stars, but some emerging stars that burst themselves onto the scene. Yes, yes, I agree. And what an opportunity for them to, to showcase their, their talent and, and skill at their home Olympics as well. You know, they, did a, they were very successful in the, sh in the eventing with Kazumo and they were very successful in the jumping in, in the individual finishing six. Um, so I must say the Japanese are, are really uh, going to be a nation to reckon with in the future games and uh, yeah. Well, it's only three years away now. Paris <laughs> is looming. The Tokyo Games are over. Fouad, for you, your very first Olympic Games, it probably seems like a complete blur and a lifetime ago because those things happen so quickly. And it is just an amazing experience. But just tell us very quickly to the viewers what it was like for you. Yeah, it was, I must say, it was something um, that's been a dream for a very long time. And, and um, uh, yeah, just the chance to go there and, and, you know, compete for your country is just, it's just very, very special. Very, very special. Um, it was very uh, special watching you. It was amazing uh, to be part of um, the whole experience, although not there. I think the television were, was able to bring 
the Olympic Games into the homes of many across the world. And it's certainly what we've been missing for, for an awful long time. It may be 12 months late. It did happen. And I think Tokyo and Japan, in my opinion, delivered on more levels than we could have ever expected. I agree. I agree. I agree. Absolutely. Tremendous ball all round. All round. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure bringing everybody the Tokyo stories for four episodes. Phil Gazala, it's been brilliant. Thank you very much. Spencer, it's been fantastic. You get insights also from the likes of Fohad. And once again, Fohad, many, many congratulations. See you in Paris. Thank you very much, Phil. Thank yeah. you very much, Spencer. Thank yeah, you for fingers crossed, Fohad. And uh, thank you to you up your time. Hope you've enjoyed the final episode of Tokyo Stories. But from us here, here and uh, all now, goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.